Hello learners, we will discuss today the application of paleontology. As you know, paleontology is composed of three words, paleos, onto, and logic. That means the study of ancient life. Whenever we study a subject, we study it because the subject has some utility. Paleontology is a science which is backbone of geology. So it has a lot of implications, applications in the geological science. So we shall discuss today the applications of paleontology. Few of them which are very important. What are the questions which paleontology or the study of fossils can answer? In fact, very big questions of geology can be answered by the study of fossils. Whenever we get the sedimentary rock and whatever history the rocks have concealed in themselves has no meaning if we do not know the age of the rock. Because any history, including the history of the earth, can be known only once you arrange the page numbers of the story in a logical manner. You can study a story book only if the pages are arranged correctly. So the fossils are like page numbers and pages are the rocks. So the layers of sedimentary rocks which contain fossil, their ages, relative ages can be fixed with the help of fossil. This is the first and foremost application to assign time to the sedimentary rock. And this is known as biostratigraphy. Now, if you look at the Earth, 70% of the globe consists of the oceans. And all your modern theories of geology, they are verified originated, tested from the ocean floor. The most important advancement which was made during 60s in the science of geological world was the plate tectonics, continental drift. It envisaged that ocean floors has spread, continents have moved, nothing has remained where they were. You know the concept of Pangaea, Gondwana land, so the ocean floor has been very dynamic. One interesting thing you should know is that as you go deeper in the ocean, deeper is the ocean floor, older it is. And the fossils can be very useful in knowing the paleo depth or the original ancient depth of the sea floor. Suppose the sea floor has been formed at a shallower depth and later it has subsided with time to a greater depth. The history of its shallowing or deepening can be known through the fossils. This we call as vertical tectonism. Then the seafloor spreading. You must have heard about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. On the two sides of Mid-Atlantic Ridge, you have towards the west, South America. Towards the east, you have Africa. And these two continents move away from each other by creation of a new ocean floor at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This history of divorce of the two continents which were joined once can be known through fossils. The rate of spreading of the sea floor has been known through the microfossils preserved on the floor of the ocean. This we call as horizontal tectonism. Then, as you understand that the ocean's floors have spreaded and the continents have moved, this has resulted into closing and opening of the ocean gateways. For example, South America and Antarctica were joined together. But now, you have a Drake passage through which there is a free flow of surface ocean current. Australia and Antarctica were joined together, but now it is occupied by Tasmanian Seaway. So likewise, 
throughout the world, you had many ocean gateways which were opened, they closed with time, and many closed gateways opened with time. Such opening and closing of the ocean gateways can be known with the help of fossils. Then, because of these ocean gateways opened and closed, the ocean circulation pattern also changed with time. If you look at the ocean currents of today, one of the major currents of the world is called as circumantarctic circulation. Due to the west wind drift, there is a current flowing encircling the Antarctica continent. Because of Antarctica, we have a stable climate because the ice sheet is quite stable there. And the ocean currents, they have a large impact on the climate because the oceans have a very high specific heat. So they store the heat distributed throughout the world. And the history of changing ocean circulation can be known through the study of fossils. The shells of the fossils, they can be studied for their trace elements, stable isotopes, and those chemical signatures, they tell us about the paleoclimate. Every fossil has lived in a particular environment. And through the study of paleontology, the evolution, the ancestor and descendant relationship, we know which fossil inhabited which sort of environment. And thus, finding those fossils in the rocks tell us about the paleo environment. So suppose you are studying a sedimentary rocks and then you get marine fossils preserved in it. The interpretation is that the rocks were formed under marine conditions. All of you are aware about Mount Everest. Do you know what it is? Mount Everest consists of a limestone. Limestone and it contains the marine fossils. So at 8,000 above meters the limestone having marine fossil, the interpretation that it formed once these limestones were under the seawater. So you can construct the history, the paleo environment with the help of fossils. And they have vast economic importance also. All oil exploration of the world is done majority in the marine rocks and these marine rocks can only be dated relatively with the help of fossils. And to know the age of the rocks, the extent of the rocks, the sedimentary beds, the fossils play a very important role. Now here you can see the planktonic foraminifera. They are preserved as fossils on the marine sediments. And you can see them that the individual species are distributed latitudinally. Some of them, they love the tropical waters, some temperate waters, cold waters, some transitional waters. So, if you look at the ancient sediments with the movement of the plates, with passage of time, with the help of these fossils, you can interpret that once the sediments were deposited, what was the original latitude? And thus you are inferring nothing but the plate movements. The bottom most square is moving from left to right. Consider this as a plate over which the oceanic sediments are being deposited. So from polar latitude, the plate is moving towards the equatorial latitude with passage of time. And the plate is accumulating sediments which mostly consists of these planktic foraminifera from the polar latitudes to equatorial latitudes. And thus the end of the sequence, you have a sedimentary column where the bottommost sediment will be depicting polar sediments, polar plankton foraminifera, and the topmost layer will be showing you the equatorial planktonic foraminifera. So from one column of sediments, which is now present at equator, if you recover, then you know that the plate or the floor containing this sequence has moved thousands of kilometers across the latitudes. And with biostratigraphy, you can tell the history of movement of this plate. So this is one of major applications in horizontal tectonism. Now, this shows 
upwelling in the oceans there are large areas where the cold water comes on the surface and because of this phenomenon there are a lot of key species of planktonic foraminifera which proliferate so if in the ancient sediments you get such key species like globigerina buloides globigerinita glutinata then you can interpret that it ancient times or whatever age they indicate there were ocean upwelling now here there is an example of how planktonic foraminifera indicated the circum antarctic current development you can see that gradually this particular foraminifera appeared in stratigraphic column earliest at one place then if you move clockwise here gradually it appeared at the later places indicating that since planktonic foraminifera move with the surface currents so the passage was not available to it but with passage of time the surface currents moved and the foraminifera appeared gradually in the path of the circum antarctic circulation that means what you are inferring here you are inferring here opening of the drake passage and tasmanian seaway here is another example where you seeing the three species of planktonic foraminifera names are pulenyatina primalis pulenyatina spectabilis pulenyatina obliquiculata for your understanding i name it, them as a grandfather father and son now what you are seeing here the indonesian archipelago from where the waters from pacific ocean they enter into indian ocean now what you are seeing that the grandfather is present in the ancient sediments on both sides of the indonesian archipelago that is towards the pacific towards the indian ocean also in the next slide what you see that indonesian archipelago emerged and thus it prevented the deeper waters to cross from pacific to the indian ocean and thus the descendant of the grandfather which is father or pulenyatina spectabilis it was confined to the pacific but it is not preserved in the sediments of indian ocean and again the indonesian archipelago was submerged with the passage of time and then the grandson that is pulenyatina obliquiculata crosses the seaway and it is preserved in the sediments of both the oceans so what you saw for grandfather the passage was okay for father the passage was blocked for son the passage is again open so during the time father lived the indonesian seaway was closed and this you know through what you know through the fossils of grandfather of father and the son preserved in the pacific and indian ocean sediments so you see there's a large implication that is closing of the ocean gateways can be known through the study of fossil so paleontology helps us to identify the relative ages of rocks that is through biostratigraphy with paleontology we know climate biota linkage the impact of climate on the biota their interaction paleontology gives us the history of earth through time we know about the evolution paleontology helps us to understand the closing and opening of ocean gateways paleobathymetry vertical tectonism horizontal tectonism of the sea floor and last but never the least paleontology is the backbone of geological time scale as you know what is geological time time is the duration between two events so geological time is also duration between two geological events the nature of time is that the time flows from future to present and goes to the past but if you look at the geological time which can only be seen through the events which are preserved in the rocks 
the time flows in opposite direction. That means the time flows from past to present to future. That means future sediments are yet to become sedimentary rocks. But past sedimentary rocks are there, present sediments are there, and future definitely the sediments will be coming. And these sedimentary rocks contain the fossil. Fossils evolve with time. The evolution is unidirectional, time is unidirectional. So to measure the time, organic evolution is the best way. And thus the geological time scale is based on the fossil record. So to sum up the entire thing, the study of fossil has lot of implications, applications, usefulness in the geological science. With the study of fossils, we know we can fix the relative ages of sedimentary rocks. We can know about the organic evolution. We can know about the species, ancestor, descendant relationship, study of the species with their environment, interaction, horizontal tectonism, vertical tectonism, closing and opening of the ocean gateways. And with the help of chemistry of the shells of the fossil, we can also know about the paleoclimates. So the fossils are indispensable to the geological sciences. Thank you, learners. Mm -hmm.